to this fall series of Healing Conversations. I'm Loren Gailey, and I'm so happy you could join us. These Healing Conversations will inspire, uplift, and empower your life. Listen in to the 24 great speakers this season. For MP3s and transcripts, please visit AcousticHealth.com and click on Radio Show. You can also help spread the word on this radio show with all this wonderful information that you won't find in mainstream media by sharing this with your friends and loved ones. Be sure to share this webpage with them. The speakers that are gathering for this series of Healing Conversations will expand your consciousness and open your heart. Sit back and journey with us in this Healing Conversation. This is fall show number eight, and today we're talking about how you can tap into the creative power of the universe. We all know that we are powerful co-creators, the masters of our lives, and we all have a great deal of help from other dimensions, from what some call spirit guides or angels. Well, my next guest teaches people how to create their own committee of angels to affect great change in their life. Jean Slater is the author of Hiring the Heavens and founder of CreativeMystic.com. Jean Slater, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Lorena. I'm just so excited to be here. Well, it is fascinating work that you're doing and teaching because... Most of us these days realize that, yes, we do have a guidance system, and you actually stumbled upon this technique. Tell us that story. Yeah, it was really, honestly, I wasn't looking at all. I was, that, I was the farthest from that, and um, I was in a time of my life where I really wanted nothing to do with the idea of angels or guides or, or spirit or God or any of that. I, I had sworn it off for about 20 years, <laughs> so I truly did just stumble upon it, and uh, it happened as I was working with a client in my naturopathic business. It was one of those extraordinary moments that is so coincidental, so syn- synchronistic that you just can't dismiss it. It, it just it, it 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 shook me up to the core. And um, this is what occurred as I was working with a particular client. Uh, I had a technique called an allergy clearing, and um, I had a way of of talking with the body. I use a pendulum to to douse and ask questions of the body, but many people are familiar with muscle testing and that sort of thing. But uh, anyway, I'm asking this client through my pendulum what allergy clearing we needed to do, and the answer came back that I needed to clear five neurotransmitters, and I had to name all five. Now, this was about 17 years ago and hadn't done a lot of research on on neurotransmitters. I was able to come up with four neurotransmitters, could not name the fifth. And so I said to my client, we need to reschedule this appointment because your body keeps telling me that I have to name what this fifth neurotransmitter is. And I can't think of what it is, so let's reschedule. And she said to me, and this is a a layperson, so like why would these be the first words that come out of her mouth? But they were. What she said was, is histamine a neurotransmitter? And I said, like I took a double take. I said, no, histamine is not a neurotransmitter. Histamine is that stuff your sinuses produce when you have an allergic reaction. That's why you take antihistamine. So, no, that's not a, 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 a neurotransmitter. And then at the very next second, for whatever reason, I turn around and I pull a book off my shelf that I had purchased a year prior and had never looked at. The book falls open to a page where the word histamine is in the title. So that was funny enough and coincidental enough. And I, yes. I said, oh, look at this. It's talking about histamine. And then in the very next millisecond, it's as if my eyes were grabbed and guided to a line buried in a paragraph. And literally, this is what it read. It said, histamine is also thought to be a neurotransmitter. Wow. Yeah, (laughs) that was my moment. That was my pivotal moment when everything changed. 
because here I was in a space where I wanted, I did not want to even acknowledge that we were anything more than what this physical body is. And here I had this experience that was so beyond coincidence. I mean, you can't explain that with, like, a mere coincidence. No, it was clearly guided. Something else was going on. And I, frankly, was just so shook up because I knew something extraordinary had just occurred. When I, when I deny, you know, my client, first of all, says it. Who says that kind of stuff? <laughs> and yet that's the first words that come out of her mouth, so something guided her to say it. And then when I denied it, something makes me turn around and pull a book off the shelf, opens the book, and takes my eyes right to the line that I need. I mean, you just can't explain that any other way. So I, of course, did the clearing and had to get the client out the door. I was so shook up. I, I would just sat there for a long time saying to myself, what just happened? How could this be? How, how does something like that occur? So in my mind, the only way that I could explain it to myself is I thought, well, maybe, just maybe, because I'm doing a good thing helping clients, maybe I've got a spiritual physician working with me. Like, how cool would that be? <laughs> <laughs> so I imagine that this spiritual physician was there standing ready over my shoulder and assisting me with all my clients. So from that day on, as I would go to work, I would call upon this spiritual physician. I would talk to them and, and say, okay, here's who I've got coming in. Can you help me discover what's going on with their health and, and with their, you know, their sense of well-being? And I started receiving amazing information. So it became very evident to me that I was getting help. So that's how it all began, and it, it has just expanded from there. <laughs> wow, it is like, would you call that your spiritual awakening? It was. It really was. Because I went through a time prior to that, like 20 years prior to that, where I went through a time of, um, well, I left the church that I grew up in as a child and, um, and just swore off religion and spirituality from that point on. I went through a time where, where um, I thought all of that was, well, uh, I went into complete um, dismissal of it. Mm -hmm. And so to have it come back around for me in a way that was so unmistakable and, and where I could not dismiss it, that was m truly my pivotal moment, and it was a spiritual awakening for me. And for me, it had to be gradual. I just couldn't be, you know, you know, jump right into it. It had to be a gradual awakening where first I got in touch with my spiritual physician that was guiding me, and then the next thing that I did is I thought, well, if I'm getting help with my clients, could I possibly get help with other aspects of my business? So the next thing I did is imagined hiring a spiritual time manager, a spiritual financial consultant, a spiritual receptionist and secretary, a spiritual marketer, all to assist me with my business. And as I did that, I was astounded because I had evidence right away, immediately, that Everything that I was being, that I had asked for was being taken care of for me. So much so that, you know, I never, during ten, the following 10 years, I never hired anybody on the physical level because it was all taken care of for me on the spiritual level. Your book is called Hiring the Heavens, A Practical Guide to Developing Working Relationships with the Spirits of Creation. And it's like a how-to manual of creating these committees that work with you. So when you say that you saw results, give us some examples of some of these things that would happen. You, you did talk about how just by asking or setting an intention, it would reflect back to you that way. Like the phone calls when you were at a conference, for example. <laughs> yeah, there was a particular conference, call, uh, conference that I would go to every year that that um, I would have to spend every lunch hour on the phone or on my computer catching up on calls and emails 
because um, by the time that I would get back from this seven-day conference, usually my my message mach machine would be all filled up and you couldn't even get into it. So to prevent that from happening, I would um, spend my lunch hours at this conference keeping on top of things. Well, I thought, hey, I've got my spiritual receptionist now working for me. <laughs> Maybe she can help me out here. So the next time that I had to go to this conference, I asked my spiritual receptionist to hold my calls and keep it down to no more than six. So when I got back from that conference, and I didn't even pay attention the entire time, but when I got back seven days later, there were six messages on my recorder. Uh -huh. Astounding. Astounding. <laughs> astounding. So then how did you communicate with your angels? Well, you know, the way that this developed for me, um, it became more like a template that you, we already are very familiar with here on the physical plane. You know, if you're going to hire somebody to help you out, what do you do? You open up the yellow pages or you go online and you take a look, you research that particular area, and then you find somebody that you really want to work with and you, and, and you call them up and you hire them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty much how I did this. I just imagined who would I need to help me with a particular issue and then it's like I tell people now just imagine you've been given the yellow pages of the universe and whatever it is that you're doing here on the physical plane um, who would you like to hire if you had no restrictions of time or money who would you bring in would you bring in a spiritual counselor would you bring in a spiritual contractor for your your home remodel would you build uh, bring in a spiritual chef to help you in the kitchen would you bring in a spiritual um, closet organizer to help you uh, organize your home uh, you know just if you had no restrictions on, on time or money, who would you like to hire? So then just imagine hiring that particular skill, ability, and talent, or even personality trait from the spiritual realm. And then talk to them just as if they're right in front of you. And I like to do this out loud. So consequently, either when I'm in my uh, room alone or if I'm driving down the road that's, uh, or I go for a walk, that's when I like to talk to my spiritual hires. And I imagine them right beside me, and I just talk out loud and say, okay, here's what we've got going on, and this is happening and that is happening, and, and you know, this is what I really would like help with. And it's amazing. You'll get evidence right away that, indeed, <laughs> there is much more that's going on than just what you see with your eyes. And that's the fun of this. It's just, it's so fun, the immediate results that you can have. For the entire conversation, visit AcousticHealth.com and click on Radio Show and register for the 24-show series of Healing Conversations. I now leave you with music from the universe, literally created by the universe, as musical composer Phil Windsor assigned musical notes to mathematical equations, and the result is this beautiful music. Visit AcousticHealth.com
Healing conversations are brought to you by AcousticHealth.com. The guests and topics discussed on the show will uplift, inspire, and empower you to co-create a beautiful life and a new earth. These healing conversations help you discover and step into your power, your passion, and your purpose. The speakers in this series are new paradigm thinkers, healers, and spiritual teachers with ancient wisdom and cosmic knowledge to share during this great shift of the ages and beyond. MP3s and transcripts are available for the entire series, along with a season event pass to online healing retreats. Visit AcousticHealth.com and click on Radio Show. Many blessings and abundance for all.